So good morning. I'm, I'm Roger Bingham. Welcome to the Salk Institute and particularly welcome to this uh, event which has been put on by the Science Network, Beyond Belief, Enlightenment 2.0. Um, this is a follow-up to last year's event uh, which ended up focusing largely on the conflict between science and religion. Uh, we thought we'd done that and we would move on to looking at some sort of larger perspective for this year, which is why we've got this extraordinary group here. I'm really grateful to you all for coming. There's, as you've probably already found out by talking to each other, there's quite a range of disciplines represented here, which is sort of what we were hoping for. Um, it's the sort of thing that Ed, Ed Wilson calls consilience. Um, I actually wrote an outline for a book about 15 years ago called The New Enlightenment and was about to send it to John Brockman, who I think is here. I may even have sent it to John, and then Wilson's book, Consilience, came plopping out under the bookshelves, which is all about enlightenment. Um, so uh, I th I'm getting my own back, finally, uh, with, by bringing you here. Um, just a quick word. Um, we are just at the Science Network, just to explain that um, you've seen in the program that uh, I like to quote Carl Sagan's characterization of science as a candle in the dark and we see it as part of our mission to enlarge the constituency of reason. So that's why we make programs about science. Uh, we figure that more, more programs, uh, more, more candles, and more light. So this is one of those candles, and um, I'm looking for a lot of enlightenment against the darkness here today and tomorrow. Um, the program, as you know, is somewhat flexible, but we do have um, a running order where we'll deal initially the first session with a broad getting to know, a reconnaissance, getting to know again of the Enlightenment issues. Then we're going to move on to a discussion um, about a specific issue, e evolution, evolutionary biology, uh, and some issues in there. Then we'll go on to some economics, and we'll finish off today with some, um, some views about reinventing the sacred, as it were. And then tomorrow we'll go on to other things. But um, I want to apologize for a couple of, um, couple of things. That the, uh, the program, as you see, has an insert. Um, we missed Greg and, and Greg Clark and Don Run Rutherford in, in the first pass through, but the insert is there now. And in fact, um, anything that goes wrong today at all, there is one reason for that. And um, if we can get that, up, that's, that's, that's basically the reason uh, for everything that possibly could have gone wrong and has gone wrong. Um, the Salk Institute was closed all last week. Uh, UCSD was closed all last week, so we had a little bit of a trouble, a uh, little bit of an administrative problem getting things organized. But we are here, we are going ahead, and um, we'll move on to um, the Dante version instead of that version. Um, let's, let's, uh, I, I would like to sort of read just one quote and then get straight into it. Um, and it's, it's a quote that, that I'm very fond of which says, therefore the seeker after the truth is not one who studies the writings of the ancients and following his natural disposition puts his trust in them, but rather the one who suspects his faith in them and questions what he gathers from them. The one who submits to argument and demonstration and not to the sayings of a human being whose nature is fraught with all kinds of imperfection and deficiency. Thus the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads and applying his mind to the core and margins of its content, attack it from every side. He should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Um, anybody want to guess who, who said that or wrote that? That was Ibn al-Haytham, um, 10th century Islam but it seems to me to be as relevant today as it was then.